Welcome back to DIY Prop Shop. And I tell you what, it's gonna be pee pee pants city here real soon. So if you caught season six of The Walking Dead, then you know that toward the end of it, they introduced one of the most interesting characters from the graphic novels, and that's Negan. Now, the characters on The Walking Dead use a very interesting array of weapons. I mean, Rick uses his guns, Michonne uses a katana, Daryl uses a bow, and Negan sees all of that, and he's like, you know what? How about a bat? I'm Negan. Not just any bat, though. He calls this bat Lucille, and he's extremely attached to it. The end of it is wrapped in barbed wire for extra devastation and really makes it a classic zombie smashing weapon. So a couple things to note about this build. We are gonna be using a real bat. So just to be you know, wary of, like if you're thinking of bringing this into a convention, they might not allow that kind of thing. So maybe this is better for home costume use. Uh, but luckily we're not using real barbed wire. So you know we don't like slice up our hands while we do this. So I'm gonna show you how to make some cheap fake barbed wire uh, that you might even use for other Halloween decorations. So with that, let's get started. Now ideally, you would find a totally unfinished bat, and that would give you a nice clean surface to work with that you could stain a darker color, and that's exactly what we want to do. If you take a look at the images for Negan's bat, it's like, it's actually close to like a walnut or a darker mahogany. So the, the bat that I found was actually clear coated, uh, but it's very, very light. So the first thing we're gonna do is strip this off, um, sand off some of the logos and words on this, uh, because Negan's bat doesn't have any, and then we're gonna refinish a little bit darker. So one other thing to note with the end of the bat, you'll notice that this has a concave cut right at the very end and Negan's bat uh, kind of just rounds off and that's the old style of making wooden bats and I used to have one like that when I was in Little League. So to make it true to the prop, we are going to have to fill this in with something and I think we'll do that after we stain. <laughs> So to get this finish off the bat, you could sand it down, but it would take you quite a while. So to accelerate that whole process, I've mixed up some 15 minute paint stripper and we can wipe that on and that should really help us take all those layers off all at once. Our bat's back down to natural wood and I've got a little bottle of golden mahogany stain that we're gonna apply with a rag. Now, you don't have to get fancy with this. Don't buy anything crazy. Like, you can even use an old t-shirt to put on stain for this kind of stuff. And actually, you know, between stripping off uh, the varnish and restaining, you now know how to refinish furniture. So, you know, you kids, you know, after school, you know, you could be like refinishing chairs. All right, you know, so don't, don't, uh, don't say I never did nothing for you. So we're gonna, we're gonna just put one coat on. We'll see how it looks. Maybe it needs two and uh, we'll take it from there. Our bat is looking much closer to the proper color. So now we can fill that end cap, and to do that, I'm gonna use epoxy sculpt. And you might be thinking, well, we just stained the rest of the bat. Like, what about this glaring piece on the end? Uh, isn't that gonna be a different color? And you'd be right, but we're gonna cover this in so much blood at the end, it's not gonna matter at all. So we can let that dry now and work on our barbed wire. Okay, barbed wire time. I've cut a considerable length of white string off of this roll and it's really just basic white craft string. Probably have it in your junk drawer. Roll this out, uh, give it a slight twist and then double it back on itself to start giving it that barbed wire look where it you know, kind of twists all along the length. We're gonna submerge that entire thing in Mod Podge that has been tinted with a little silver and a little black to get closer to the metal color. And then after that's starting to dry up nicely, we can come back and do little string tie-offs to do the individual barbs all along the length. Ew, I don't want this bullshit. <laughs> I should warn you, you are going to get glue all over your hands in doing this, so 
I would just accept it and uh, you know have some fun with it. All right, I might regret this, but let's. There we go. This gluey knot to work with. Oh, it might work out. It might work out. It might work out. Way faster. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> uh, so I think we're gonna go hang this up outside to dry. So here's our method for making the individual barbs to go along the length of the wire. We've got a lot of these little sections of single string that we're also going to dunk in that colored paint mixture. We're going to tie it in a knot around the wire, maybe about a foot spacing in between each of these. And then since it's nice and soaked in that glue, we can actually fray the ends and kind of twirl them out into four distinct points for each location of the barb. And then just a hundred more. So we are ready to wrap. Now judging by the picture, the barbed wire starts about midway up the bat and then gets a lot more dense right around the sweet spot. And we've got to make sure that we send at least one wrap right over the top of the bat. Now you'll see that I also hedged the bets a little bit by doing a base coat of brown, but don't worry, the blood's coming. So I think our first step is to tie this off. It doesn't even have to be good, it just has to be Negan. <laughs> All right, I think we're looking pretty good here. So I'm gonna just touch a couple spots with glue to secure things up and keep this from shifting around the bat. Make sure we get that spot. Nice and good. Coming up on the last steps now, I'm gonna dry brush on some silver to the barbs just to give a little bit more contrast. And if you'd like to be done at that point, you're certainly done, you've got a finished bat. But I'm gonna take it a step further and add some very gritty blood. If you touch the bat with the silver, uh, you do have to completely start over. I'm kidding, wipe it off. Um, but also I did find that the silver looks best if you can do it in one nice continuous line instead of making it look blotchy. Um, when this all comes together, the dark silver makes it look like it's a little aged, but the light silver kind of suggests that it's still sharp. All right, blood time. We're gonna mix up some red, a little bit of black, and mystery ingredient of coffee grounds just to give it that very gritty texture. So I was talking to my dad last week about this and I told him what I was gonna make. And uh, he was saying that I should cut up a wig and like start laying down some hair like in the barbs, but like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that bothers me more than gritty blood. So, I don't know, I don't know dad. <laughs> Now that is our finished Negan's bat. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. And this is an easy one day build, but we still learned some pretty good techniques like stripping and restaining wood, making fake barbed wire out of just white string and paint, and of course adding on some goopy blood. So you know how we always say, send us an email at DIYPropShop at break.com and we'd love to see your builds? Well, you sent them in and we would love to share them with you now. First up, we've got Carter at CJD Props who made a Mad Max face mask for his dad. That's pretty nice. We've got Noah, who gave me a great suggestion for recoding the Green Lantern using duple color paint. Hey, check out this controller that he made. There's Alana, who made a miniature version of Harley's Hammer. George and his pals, who did Harley's Hammer for a fantastic gender bend cosplay. And Shelby, David, and Eric, who used the hammer method to make an Ice Climbers cosplay. Like full on Nana and Popo at Convergence. Look at this, how cool is that? Thank you so much for sharing your work. And with that, I'm Vinny, and I'll see you next time.
Ah!